and we're back. What's up everyone, I'm Nick. In this video, we're gonna look at the text editor. So if you've been following along in the last video, we covered the text field. And the text field is perfect, but unfortunately it is only one line. So if we need multiple lines for the user to type something in, maybe like a bio, where a user can have a couple different lines, then we have to use a text editor. Now the text editor is a little harder to use and a little harder to customize than the text field. So the general rule I use is that if you absolutely need multiple lines, go ahead and use the text editor. But if you can get away with just one line, like a username is always usually one line, then use the text field. All right, welcome back everyone. Another pretty easy and fun video today. Uh, let's get started. We're in Xcode. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It's going to be a Swift UI view and we're talking about text editors. So let's call this text editor bootcamp. Once you're inside, go ahead and click resume on the canvas and let's get ready to code. Now the text editor is essentially the same thing as the text field except it has multiple lines. So if in your app you only need one line for input, like a username, use a text field. If you need multiple lines for like a user's bio or something like that, then you can use the text editor. And we're gonna set up our screen just like we set up in the last video. So let's start with a navigation view. Open the brackets. Inside the navigation view, let's add a V stack. And at the top of the V stack, let's add a text editor. Open the parentheses, and we only have one completion here, and it just has text. And you'll notice that it is a binding string. So we'll click enter on that. And we have the option of adding a constant here if we don't want to change the text, but we're going to change it. So let's add that binding string. So we'll do at state var text editor text of type string equals, and we'll set it to a blank string. We'll bind it to the text editor with the money sign text editor text. Below the text editor, let's add a save button. So we will do button, open the parentheses. We're gonna use the action and label completion. For the action, we'll leave it blank for now. And for the text, we'll type save. We'll make it uppercase. Again, I'm moving fast because we've done all this in previous videos. Let's change the font to headline. Let's make the font color, the foreground color white. Let's add some padding and a background of color.blue. Then let's add a corner radius of 10. Let's also make the background as wide as possible. So let's set the frame to a max width of infinity. Make sure we're setting that frame before we add that background. And then at the bottom of the V stack, let's just add the navigation title because we are in that navigation view. So let's make this title say text editor bootcamp. Let's click resume on the canvas and see what we got so far. So it's a little hard to see this text editor right now. So let's add some text to it up here. So let's do, this is the starting text. Let's resume the canvas. And it looks like our text editor is starting up here. Uh, but since it's in the same V stack as the save button, it must be expanding as big as possible. So I've said a couple times before in this course, whenever you are confused about where a frame is starting and ending, and you're not really sure where it is on the screen, the easiest way to debug that is to just add backgrounds to either that component or the components that it's in. So in this case, I'm gonna add a background color to the V stack so that we can see where the V stack is. So at the bottom of the V stack, first let's add some padding just to push it in from the edges. And then let's add a background and we'll just do color.green. So now that we have that green background, we can actually see where this text editor is starting and ending. And it looks like the text editor by default has a maximum height of infinity because it's pushing as big as possible in this space. So let's set a frame on this text editor so it's not as big. We'll do dot frame. Let's just add a height and maybe we'll do like 250. That looks better. And I want to push this to the top. So at the bottom of the V stack, after the button, let's add a spacer. Just push that up to the top there. 
So now we have our text editor and this works very similar to the text field that we did in the last video, except the text editor has multiple lines as you can see. So I can press enter in this text field and go on to multiple lines. And then we can even start scrolling up and down in this text editor. So the text editor is useful if you need to add multiple lines. However, it's a little less customizable. So if you have a situation in your app where you only, where it's acceptable to only have one line of text, and you're okay with the user only seeing that first line, go ahead and use a text field. But if you absolutely need to have multiple lines, then you can use a text editor. So let's actually save the text in the text editor. So let's create a variable at the top to store our saved data. So we'll just do at state var saved text of type string, and we'll set it equal to a blank string for now. And underneath the button, we will just add a text with our saved text. So right now it's a blank string. We can't really see anything on the screen, but when we click this button, let's just update the save text. So in a real app, I'd, I would create a separate function for this, but it's just gonna be one line of code for here. So I'm just going to write it directly in the button and let's set the saved text equal to the text editor text. So click resume on the canvas. This is the starting text. Let's click save. And now this is the starting text has saved down here. And then I can update this, ha ha ha. And when I click save, it now saves this text. And so this is a very common approach. If maybe you had a user's bio here and they had their bio and they wanted to update their bio, so you could click save and then it would update with the new information. And if we deleted all of this and overwrote it with some new information, Welcome to Swiftful Thinking. Thanks for watching. And we clicked save. Then it would overwrite whatever was there. And I mentioned earlier that the text editor is a little harder to format than the text field, but we can format it a little bit. So if we wanted to change the font color from this black, from this primary color, we can call that foreground color dot red or whatever color you want here. And that will just change the text, but the background of course is still white. Unfortunately, we can't just call dot background and change the background color on this. I'm not really sure what's happening under the hood and why we can't change the background. I wish we could, uh, but I did notice that if we, instead of using background, we called it dot color multiply, we can then change the background. But this color multiply, I noticed only really works if the text is black or primary, because if you change this, I think it actually changes the text color as well. So you can play around with the colors and see what works. Uh, if this was my app, I would use like a light gray. So maybe like color, uh, color literal. Let's double click on the color literal. Let's click other and maybe use one of these off whites. Let's do like silver. And then maybe I would give it a dot corner radius of 10 so it matches the button. And then we can get rid of that green. And this looks a little better, a little more professional. And it still, of course, works. This is the starting text. Let's save that. Let's add an update. Let's save that and it overwrites. We can delete all this text. And this is my new bio. And then it will overwrite. So overall, the text editor is kind of the same thing as the text field, except it has multiple lines. Offhand, I would recommend using a text field whenever you can, and only really use the text editor if you absolutely need multiple lines. Because it's a little harder to work with, there are less advanced features. If you're going to use some of the more advanced things that the text field has that the text editor does not. But now you guys are experts on both text fields and text editors. They should be pretty easy to use. Just create that binding string and create a button to save the text. As always, thank you guys for watching. You already know, but my name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you all in the next video.